How you doing? Steve Noble, Noble Moto. Uh, out here in my hot and humid garage. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to replace the uh, riser bushings and the handlebar risers up there in the triple trees. Have the risers bolt on to. Um, laid the bike down a few weeks ago uh, down in West Virginia. Hello, whoops. Uh, misjudgment on speed and turn. Um, and tweak the handlebars a little bit and also torque the handlebar risers. So I got new bolts to put in there, plus uh, picked up some new rubber riser bushings. Uh, stock ones had 50 some thousand miles on them, so they're probably a little whooped anyways. So I'm just going to replace them with more stock riser rubber bushings. Rubber riser bushings, whatever you call them. Anyways, pretty simple, straightforward repair. Most people can do this in their driveway with basic hand tools. I'm going to zoom in here and I'll show you what we got going on. Alright, up here at Triple Trees, um, got a half inch bolt that holds each riser in, so it's really just a two bolt job. Uh, we're going to leave the clamp, the top clamp clamped on to the uh, triple, to the risers. Um, that should help keep everything in line and in place and hopefully make it all a little easier to balance as we do this whole job. Um, then we might have to loosen that up to do any little fine tune alignments there at the end. But, let's get to it. I have a three quarter inch wrench right here, if you can see it. Whoop. Using a ratcheting wrench just for clearance. But, standard box in wrench will work. We're going to get in here and just break them free. Tight enough. Now let's break it free. And in full disclosure, I already broke this bolt free earlier. They are pretty long bolts. As you're backing this out, make sure you don't pinch any of your wiring here uh, as the ratchet goes out further. So I got some of the wiring pulled off to the side. I'll just push the lightly push the headlight wiring down out of there, the gauge wiring. And then we will just wrench that sucker right on out of there. And it should just now there's a little grounding wire right here uh, and that grounds out your gauges Whoop, there we go so with this grounding wire got to be careful when you take it out of there because uh, it's wired up it does bind up on the bolts and you'll have to fight with it like you just saw me doing there so go around the other side Same procedure over here. You have to hold the handlebars in one hand here. Should be able to thread the bolt all the way out. And there, you can take the bolt out. Now I'm actually going to leave that in there by the last two or three threads. And this way, I can swing it to this side here, and then we can take the bushings out. Take screws out there. And we're gonna get a flathead screwdriver, which I don't have on my hand here. One second. All right, got the flathead screwdriver here. So we're gonna take that and just uh, should be able to pry the bushing right up out of there. They come in two pieces, so they should separate off. Pop out the top here. Sometimes a little easier said than done. There we are. As you can see, I pushed the uh, bushing down through the bottom there, the steel bushing. We'll just go with that. Pop the old one out, just like so. Pop the bottom one out right there. Boom. There's your old bushings. They're really not in that bad of shape, but probably got a little soft. Looks like they're starting to break down right here. Um, I mean, they weren't flopping around and moving all over the place, but they weren't new either. So, there you have it. Here, we have our new rubber bushings from Harley. Uh, one of the few things I actually buy from Harley. Slide the bottom one in. Slide the top one in. And take that steel shaft that you have right here. 
should still be in good shape. Make sure there's no wear on the inside or outside of it. And this, this all looks pretty good. Should hopefully be able to slide it right down on in there. Might take our screwdriver here and push on a little bit. There we go. And if it absolutely fights you, you can put a little dab of grease on there uh, just to make it all slide together pretty well. But that was in pretty good shape there. So from there, we've got our new cap here. Well, sorry, the old cap there goes on top. Got our old cap on the bottom, lock washer. Got a new three quarter, whoop, sorry, new half. Uh, half by 13 bolt here. Um, pick this up at the local hardware store. Grade 5. You can use grade 5 or grade 8. But make sure you at least have the three marks on here that, dig that signify the grade 5. There we go. There you can see it. Or if it's got five marks on there, it signifies the grade 8. So I think it's five marks 8. Google it. Be sure. Either way, don't put Chinese bolts in there. Whoops, sorry. So we're going to slide the lock washer through there. Hang on, I did this in the wrong order. So, going to slide the lock washer here. Wait, which way does this go? There, like so. That one like that. That one like that. So, going to have the wire in there. Lock washer up against the head of the bolt. A uh, little spacer lock washer, the little thin one on top of the wiring mount there. I'm going to slide it right up there. Slide this side back in and thread it in here. Just thread in a decent way with your fingers. That way when you do the other side, it'll hold the uh, risers and everything in place. Alright, over on the right side, hopefully you can see everything that's going on. I'm still a little new to being a cameraman here. Uh, so I've already got this loose, so I'm going to thread this one all the way out there, just like we did the other side. Spin the risers off, just inside there. Then screwdriver, take the washer out, move the broken turn signal wiring out of the way that I haven't fixed yet. Then take screwdriver. And push that bushing whoop, right on out the bottom there. There's the old one. The top one's stuck in there a little bit, so we'll take a screwdriver there and Pull that out. This one, if you can see it, it's actually pretty odd round. I don't know if you can see there or not. Um, this is the side that seemed to be a little crooked anyways, uh, even after I put new handlebars on it. So, we'll grab the new riser bushings. Just for demonstration purposes here too, in case they were a little hard. Whoop. You can take a wee little bit of general purpose grease here. I think I got some wheel bearing grease because that's what I got lying around. Slide that sucker down in there. Put a little grease on the outside of the steel sleeve here. We'll just stick that in there from the top for starters. I got our new bushing here for the bottom. Put just the faintest little bit of film of grease down on there. Slide that in from the bottom. Might be able to. There we go. Look at that. Even got lucky. Push down in from the top. Push down that last little bit. There we go. From there, new bolts. Steel washer on top. At least on the 05 Dyna, there's no wiring on the right side, so you don't have to worry about that. Slide this back into place. Slide your bolt in up from the bottom there. 
get the start in there. And this should just thread right back in here. Relatively simple. There we go. You can take your ratcheting wrench and run the bolt all the way up in here. All right, grab two Allen wrenches here. Really could do this at one, but I just happen to have two in here. Uh, before we tighten all this down, we're going to crack these bolts free. Just a little bit on each one of your uh, top clamps here. Go on the shaky cam here and we'll crack that one free. And what this is going to do, this will allow us to realign everything up here. So just a little bit free. Um, so when we tighten it all down, this will all reseat in place. This is especially true if you got like a one piece top clamp like this here. Um, cause if you just tighten it up on one side differently than the other side, it'll actually kind of tweak the alignment of the risers and then, uh, your handlebars would be crooked. So from there, we'll go back around the other, well, first, since that side's loose, I'm going to take the wrench up in here. We're going to tighten the snot out of this thing. I don't know the exact torque specs off the top of my head. I'm going to have to look it up. But these things need to be pretty tight. So torque it down to your manufacturer's specs. And we're going to go with tight, tight. Then we'll go around the other side. All right, back over here on the left side. So what we're going to do from here, just like the other side, is I'm going to run this the rest of the way in by hand pretty much all the way there. We're going to ratchet strap this in here. Or ratchet it all down in there. Now you want to put a rag or something over your paint. Alright, then from there we're going to take a quarter inch wrench, or a quarter inch Allen wrench, and we're going to go around and we're going to tighten all these up evenly. Not sure why the two bolts on the right are rusting to buy some replacement bolts. So we're going to go finger tight on each one of these. Everything's still in line. Um, so I'm going to snug up this one here. Snug each one of them up a little bit finger tight. Then to keep it straight, we're going to go finger tight on the top ones. We didn't do crisscross initially because that could actually twist how this whole clamp is mounted. So we did the top ones just a little bit. Now we're going to do a sort of crisscross Go down here, the bottom ones, snug those up, and now that it's snug down, we'll do the conventional crisscross pattern. So, tighten that one up to specs, tighten this one up to factory specs, and you don't need to put Loctite on these things. As long as you go crisscross on them and tighten them up evenly, uh, you should get a nice even clamp on there, and uh, they should never move. Right there, it's pretty good. We are good to go. Uh, from there, let's pan back out. Risers are straight. Whoop. Handlebars look straight. At least I think they do. Might be a little crooked camera nest there. There we go. All looks straight now. 